Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this is the first in my video series on shock and drop analysis. Now, there are a number of ways to do a drop or shock simulation in using ANSYS tools. A good place to start is a component level drop simulation or shock analysis using something like the JDAC 22. B111 standard. Here the goal is to do a shock analysis on a PCB assembly or some components. It's a place on an anvil and dropped against a striking surface. The goal is to achieve a shock response that's a half sign, 1500G half a millisecond sign, half sign pulse. We can simulate this event using a response spectrum simulation, which is a linear dynamics method. We can use a transient modal superposition linear dynamics method. We can do an implicit transient simulation or an explicit dynamics method. So there are four different methods. I'm going to start with the easiest one, which is a response spectrum analysis, a shock response spectrum analysis. In a response spectrum analysis, we start with a large model that takes a long transient simulation. We extract the mode shape from our large model, and using a small model, we ran the long transient simulation to extract the response spectrum. Combining the modal solution and the response spectrum allows us to calculate the response of our structure in a fast and approximate manner. If you're interested in more details on response spectrum analysis, please take a look at the ANSYS training manuals on linear dynamics. The first step to a response spectrum analysis is to get the response spectrum itself, which involves exciting a series of one degree of freedom at, uh, resonators with long transient simulations and identifying the maximum acceleration or displacement. Now it's possible to use existing spectrums that's already been created for you, but in things like a 1500G half sine shock, or maybe you have specific criteria you've defined for your particular system, it's helpful to be able to generate an arbitrary response spectrum based on a given shock profile. That's the process that I will demonstrate today. We're going to start with a transient structural analysis. The idea is that we're going to start with a basic geometry that consists of a unit cube. We'll put an acceleration through it, then calculate the response spectrum from its motions. So this is my unit cube. I will make the part a rigid body. Instead of flexible body, we'll set this to rigid so it reduces to a six degrees of freedom problem. We'll attach a remote point on this. This gives us a, a location. We'll select this face up here. This gives us a location to measure, for example, the acceleration or displacement for our response spectrum calculations. And we'll give it a name. We'll call it pilot one. This allows us to refer back to the remote point note later on. Next step is to set up our analysis settings. We'll use a one time step here. Total time will be two milliseconds and we'll be using constant time stepping of uh, one to the minus five seconds. This will give us lots of data. Our shock profile will be half a millisecond and then we'll have 1.5 milliseconds of uh, constant or zero acceleration. Next step is let's add some acceleration. This will be from the inertia menu. menu. We're going to assign components. So we're going to accelerate this in, let's say, the x-axis upwards here. So you can create an Excel spreadsheet. And we will copy and paste this Excel spreadsheet over here. We just need to, I, I put created an Excel spreadsheet that goes up to, all the way up to one millisecond, but we just needed to go past half a millisecond like this. And then we'll, we'll copy the same sets of data for the acceleration side. So this will be a 1500G acceleration in the X axis. And then we have stationary output after that. So this will be a very fast simulation with just a couple of nodes going through an acceleration profile. We're going to extract our response spectrum curve using a command snippet. Insert a command here. This allows us to inject APDL commands into the post-processing. 
Here we're using a few APDL commands to calculate the response spectrum that we're going to be using. The key command is here, response, RESP stands for the response spectrum calculation. It needs some inputs. So let's see what the rest of the command snippet says here. We're going to show pictures, and we're going to be using the POST22 POST processor. First, we're going to select pilot number two and store the results of the x-directional acceleration into the variable number two. On the x-axis, we're going to plot the time. So we get a time versus acceleration plot. This should look exactly like the acceleration plot we've inputted. The next step is to create a table of frequencies we want to extract. So this will be put into the variable three location. And the inputs here are fill the data, fill a frequency table to variable number three. We're going to start at 1 and end at 20. So there will be 20 rows in total. Uh, the rows will have start, we'll fill every single location starting at the first row. And we're going to increment by 100 hertz. So the first value will be 1, it will be 101, so on and so forth, up to 2,000 hertz. Then we have a couple of commands to calculate the response spectrum. Here, we're going to calculate two sets of response spectrum for different damping values. One will be 10% damping, the other will be 1% damping. So the other inputs here are number three represents the frequency data that we just calculated. The two here is our, is our time history data that we're using, which is over here. The three here represents the fact that we want to plot an acceleration response spectrum. One would be displacement, and two would be velocity. Then we put some damping information in, and integration time step size to ensure that we capture some high frequency data. And a few, uh, few comments later, we put the number one in. This allows us to define that my input here is acceleration versus time, not displacement versus time. So then we can plot the, the sets of data again. We can plot number three uh, versus the frequency versus uh, the response spectrums we calculated. Uh, and finally, we print out this data to a text during the output so we can copy it into other simulations. So let's go ahead and run the simulation and see what it does. And so the simulation runs, runs very quickly here. We have an acceleration versus time plot, as we'd expect it. It's a 1500G half sign. And then we have a couple of response spectrums that's calculated based on that value. If we go into the text plot here on the bottom, it shows me uh, all of the data that we've outputted, frequency versus 10% damping and 1% damping. We can copy and paste this into things like Excel, write it out, and load into a response spectrum for analysis. So this is a nice, easy way of allowing you to define any type of acceleration versus time curve and quickly generate a res response spectrum for analysis. This is the start of a linear shock analysis. So I hope you like this video. Thank you.